Hi, welcome to another episode of Learn, Grow, Invest CEO series. Today, I have the pleasure to speak with Jeremy Barnes, the CEO of FESCO. I, I would say the full name, it's, it's a mouthful. But um, this is going to be definitely a, a, a great session, one of those that we've been, been looking forward to for a long time here. So, you know, the usual, I'm going to ask you to share the video, um, you know, post it to your timeline, post it to your social media platforms so that we can get as much persons joining this conversation as possible. We do have some questions that we've, we've, we've collected from our community, but you're free to post your questions live as well, and we'll take as much of them as we can within the hour that we have for this interview. So let's just go and get started. Learning is the key to successful investing. And who doesn't want to invest in some way? Here at Learn, Grow, Invest, we focus on financial education, all with the aim of sharing our knowledge on personal finance, investing, and building wealth. We do this on the foundation of our faith in God. If a more holistic approach is what you need, check out our Grow Faith-Based Financial Coaching Program. Find out more about us at learngrowinvestclub.com and follow us on all social media platforms at Learn, Grow, Invest. All right. Welcome again, everyone. I am going to pray. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you that we are able to see it. We pray, Lord, that you will give us knowledge, understanding, and wisdom to be able to make wise investment decisions. We pray that you bless this community. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, everyone. Good to see everyone here. Um, I know a lot of you have been looking forward to this interview, so let me not delay any further. Before I get started, though, let me know where you're joining from and let me know if this is your first time here. I'll share the links to our community group near the end so you can feel free to join us if you are looking for a place to you know, talk about investing daily. But let me not delay any further. We have Jeremy Barnes backstage. Jeremy, how are you doing? Hi, everybody. I'm doing very well. Thanks. Great, great. So thank you for agreeing to meet with us. You know, when we reach out to CEOs, we're not always sure uh, what the response will be. But, you know, I'm happy to, to say that, you know, when I reached out, we were like, you know, you're on board. And as soon as we're able to, we can, we can do this. So very, very, very happy to hear that. So we collected a whole bunch of questions for you. But I know that you, um, you had prepared something and sent to me. So we'll go through some of those slides first. And then as, as the questions are relevant, we'll take them from the ones that we sent you. And then persons will you know, be posting some in, in the chat, I'm sure, as we go along. Okay. All right? So um, let me just bring that up here. All right. So where do you want to start? Right, so you know our, our quarter, our financial year is April to through to March. So our, you know we're in our, our first quarter, which ended June 30, 2022, just completed. And we just um, published results for that quarter. So this presentation is taking you through a lot of those. The results of the quarter, which actually was our best quarter ever. Um, yes, we noticed that. Right, and um, giving you some insights into what to expect for you know the next two quarters. I'm not giving you too much, just you know, enough. I cannot um, overshare, but you know, as best as possible, I'd love to you know give you guys insights into the company. So, right. can go to the next slide. So, who we are, you know, our Fesco, what we know, that's Future Energy Source Company Limited, Fesco. Um, we are we have 17 gas stations as of Q2, so we added a station in um, July. We mainly distribute fuels to our you know, service stations and to our industrial plants. In addition to that, through the convenience stores, we sell our lubricants, future oil. We sell our car care chemicals, you know, including windscreen, wash, and coolants, and our very refreshing um, FIC bottle, purified bottled water. In addition to that, we have, um, we have introduced to the market the first marketing company in Jamaica to offer a blended fuel. So actually we offer an E1088 blend at our beach with Avenue station currently, which we do plan to roll out at other stations coming soon. Okay. Uh, next slide. All right. All right. So as I said before, we recorded our best quarter ever. Um, when we when we started out you know, doing our IPO, I think our profit for the year that year was about 108 million net. 
for the courts and just said in June, we made 152 million dollars. Um, you know, the 152 million dollars is with reference to making about 39 million last year. Um, our gross profits has risen from 59, 50, 50, sorry, 55 million dollars for quarter one last year to 216 million dollars for this quarter this year. And as I said before, our net profits has increased substantially, you know, versus last year, over 280%. And it's about 59% of what we need for the entire financial year in the month. So we're more than halfway there to what we did for the performance last year. Um, since the quarter's end at June 30th, we have added one station in St. Elizabeth, and we're at 17 stations. Sorry. And and with regard to our prospectus, we are on track to exceed our 2023 target of 362 million for this financial year. Mm -hmm. um, we anticipate adding about <clears throat> three service stations for the next, you know, 24 months. Um, we plan to hope to, you know, <clears throat> sorry, add another station by the end of this calendar year by December, uh -huh. and we hope to enter the LPG market by next year we're making significant investments in lpg um, from our balance sheet you can see that we have increased our non-current assets which is basically our fixed assets and that's you know for the most part you know acquired lpg assets you know and some service station assets but as at last year i think we've spent we've increased that asset structure about a billion dollars so we've been spending a lot acquiring it's a very capital intensive um, industry to enter including bobtail, cylinder, storage, equipment, land. So we've been, you know, been spending a lot of money, you know, in trying to enter the LPG market next year. Next slide. Okay. Uh, dividends, I think we'll be we, um, alert to the market that we intend to um, pay a dividend, a second dividend for the year to total about 26.2. 2.6 cents for the year, which creates about $65 million for the financial year, which is, as we said, we wanted to pay out a minimum of 25% of our yes. profits. So, you know, fulfilling that um, prospective, prospective, prospectus objective, right? Um, during the last year, we raised $1 billion in debt from, in, from um, bond, which was um, done by NCB Capital Markets, so, like the company, so they, they actually took up the entire um bond themselves um and that was mainly to you know acquire lpg assets and expand our network and as i said before you knew you were the first marketing company we were proud enough to introduce additional blend to the market which has been which has been very well um a lot of you know taxi drivers and you know bike um motorcycles that you know swear by the product um the truth be told, it was something that our motors were doing before. They were blending, you know, 87 and 90 in their own tanks. And the technology is there. Technology is about 40 years old, but it was just being introduced in Jamaica. So it's proven technology um, demanded by the people, and we're supplying the people with the meeting that demand. And um, so far, it's been a very good experience. Um, the, the, the clients love it, and, you know, we like we like returns and the, the, the patronage that we're getting. Right. And yeah. I definitely can't say I understand any of that stuff about the blend, <laughs> but my wife who worked in the in the in in the industry, I'm sure can explain it to me at some point. Sure. And I will. Um so I mean I can basically explain it to you this way. So as you everybody know, people buy cheese party now, correct? Right? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> he's always existed, party always existed. And people actually came to mothers and asked for a cheese party. Or please put cheese in the party. Yes. And then mothers, after hearing a lot of people doing this, started to add the, pot, the cheese to the party and call a product cheese party. So there were a lot of people that were asking, let's say, you know, give me a thousand dollars ninety and a thousand dollars eighty seven. They were blending the fuel in their tank by splash blending. So what we did was invest in the technology that exists within the dispenser itself that enables us to create a ratio of 87 and 90 that produces a higher octane rating than the lowest rating, which is 87, which is 88, which you know a lot of vehicles uh, perform better under, especially for an 88 consumer. 
And um, it's, it, as I say, it's pretty popular. Um, it's just using the technology that's out there, applying the technology. And as I say, it's not new. It's just new to Jamaica. Um, and as I say, people love it. Nothing okay. more complicated than that. Yeah. I um, mean, the, the cheese patty reference is priceless. That's actually a running joke in our Telegram group. That's that's a measurement for wealth if you're able to afford a cheese patty. So that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. But it's one of those things where the consumers dictate what they want, and it's really for a, co a, a company listening to what people are actually saying and coming up with a product to satisfy that. Way. So it's one of the yeah. examples where we're actually listening to what's going on in the market, adapt, and come with a product that satisfies that. Way. Yeah, great, great. All right, so we have the financial highlights here. All right, so the first column in blue is on auditing. It's the first week. Is the first quarter this year decided it is a quarter for last year the growth between the quarters you know percentage wise that there's a growth in um dollars so let's say if you look at the first line turnover by 6.4 billion versus 1.9 billion the year before which is a four and a half billion increase or 213 percent yeah the additional columns to the side are the audited last year and audited the previous year and it basically shows you how we have exceeded full year of when we came to, to market when we came to market we we, we uh, okay, audited ended march 2021 so for the full year we did 5.8 billion for the quarter we did 6.4 billion it's amazing and we look at, right and when you look at net profit i think we did 108 you scroll down for the entire year ending march 2021 and for the quarter we almost in 152 million dollars in net profit so if you look again, even year over year, um, last year, this quarter we made about 40 million, this year we made 152 almost million, which is about a $112 million increase or 280%. Again, this was all promised in the IPO that we're going to be growing, the toilet that we're going to add station, the toilet that we're going to expand our, you know, start in retail by owning stations that we, you know, establish an open retail avenue. Um, we're very, very grateful to the public and our shareholders who patronize our business on a daily basis. Um, we are very happy when we hear that there are challenges in getting into our stations because they're overcrowded. Someone actually asked about that. Someone was like, what are you planning to do about the line that is there? Because it's, it's, it's a thing. It's an it's a, it's a excellent problem to have. Um, we have actually done a lot of stuff to expand capacity, even you know as we speak. So you know, at Beechwood Avenue, we have, um, we have bought and installed retractable hoses, which allows us to dispense on either side of the car, which you know, either side of the car, no matter how, how the car drives in, which wasn't how it was you know a few months ago. So it has expanded our capacity at Beechwood Avenue. We're doing the same at um, Ferry. So, you know, we, we expanding capacity in that way. So we were to handle more cars and throughput a lot better. Truth be told, even when people join the lines at Beachwood and at Ferry, what one of the main comments we get is that it moves fast. Yeah. It's one of those lines that, you know, you hit it and it, it actually moves fast. The, the design of the stations were particularly so done that it enabled the fastest throughput. So you don't really have a car that has dispensed and needs to navigate out of the station by navigate another car that's on a pump. It's called a start again design. We did that on purpose. Um, so yes, there are lines, but you do get through quickly. And in addition to that, because of the op opening up of the economy, we have open our stations 24 hours, Beachwood Avenue, and Ferry now is open 24 hours since so July. So, you know, instead of closing at 10 or 11, they're, you know, running right through. Um, Patrons love that. Um, they have been supporting it, you know, a lot. We get a lot of people, especially on Beachwood Avenue, before and after they go to the parties or the events. So, you know, we have quite a bit of traffic in the nights also. And again, you know, really grateful to the public for supporting us. We really, really appreciate it. Persons in the group will share their weekly screenshots of being at the festival. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's a thing. Right. The only thing I could hope for, and you know, we're trying to tackle some of those challenges, is like with um, point of sales. 
Uh, the truth is, apparently, the terminal only lasts about three to three hours, and um, we run a twenty-four hour ship. So we have actually have more POS terminals than we have pumps, but because it only lasts two to three hours, sometimes it poses a challenge during the days, and you know, I apologize to customers sometimes. When, you know, the battery is running low or the signal is running a little bit low. We try our best and we're trying our best to execute that. Um, you know, the banks at this point in time are on the refurbishing machines because the chip shortage has extended to point of sale machines. But it's something that we're actually we're looking at it and, you know, as soon as we can, you know, improve that area, we will improve that area. But um, I must tell you that I'm really, really surprised and grateful for the support. I think I think those are all things that customers and, and potential customers will be happy to hear because I mean the demand is there, that means you will have things like long lines and various challenges. It sounds to me like you're making the steps to improve those. So But the lines move fast. So yes, it's, one yes. those, it's one of those line scenario that and it's organized. Um you know, sometimes you go somewhere and you buy let's say you buy food and you have to be boring between people and shows yeah. and it's not yeah. really that so you know what we have done at both locations of how actually have traffic wardens that direct the yes, traffic i noticed that because right. as i drove in there was somebody directing us telling us where to go almost instantly as the minute we entered the station somebody was guiding us correct yeah. so that gives some order to it a lot of order to it and it allows people to feel that you're not in a chaotic space which yeah. is very important yeah man all all good things all good things so we have a few more slides here. Um, sure. You want to? So I mean, all of the, all the financial stuff is very rosy. Um, you know, our ratios are intact. You know, we're reducing our debt, relatively speaking, because our balance sheet is growing. So if you look at our debt to equity ratio, it's coming down. If you look at our liquidity, our liquidity remains strong. Actually, we're going to even increase our liquidity because we're going to move some of our short-term debt to long-term, or we have already in July. So that will improve our liquidity. Um, if you're talking about, okay, let's see that. So debt to equity ratio is about one. So for one, every one dollar in debt will have equity. And again, um, our book value of equity is about 922 million. If you looked at it last year, this time it was 581 million. So we're growing and, you know, retained earnings is the, is, the, is the main reason why, you know, this is improving. We haven't done an APR in the United you know, what is really building our balance sheet is retained earnings. So it's profitability that's that's the backbone of the company. You know, when you go to the history of the company, the company really started about nine hundred dollars Jamaican and we grew our way of making profits to build a balance sheet. So the company is very, very interested in ROI. It's what that's return on invested capital. It's what guides all our decisions in here. If it generates a return, and that's the guiding principle behind how we invest and what we do our you know, capital um so you know without saying it you know again the results are the best that we've ever done uh, it should give some guidance as what to, to come in the next few months yeah for each part so of one, of the, one of the questions that we got and uh, i can jump the gun now based on what we're talking about and that is profitability one of the questions were with the gas prices gas prices seeing an ease what does that mean for your future of profitability? Are you able to maintain the same path of growth that you're on or will things slow down? Well, let me put it this way. I think in the in the, our Q2, sorry, our Q1 um, report, I think we stated that I think um, gasoline prices were about 43%. I think diesel price over a period is about 57%. So if our revenues go by 280, it is more a function of we selling more fuel than it is the price of fuel for the revenue. Okay. And it is also the same for our gross profits and you know, going down to net profits. We sell more fuel. We keep yeah. each month we sell more fuel than the next. So you're yes. saying that? The, the pace of growth that you're headed for is not so reliant on the price of gas, but the volume in which you're selling, and you expect that volume to continue growing based on all the things that you're doing. And every time I have a, a audit committee report, we're going to express, you know, um, we're going to approve um, the Q reports, the quarterly reports, 
they always ask, so why 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 German why keep repeating that we focus not on turnover but we focus on gross profits and liters of fuel so it's really trying to express to everybody that the drivers in our business is margin and liters it's not necessarily the price of fuel. okay those are the key drivers all right yeah. all right so you have here outlook so what, what does the future look like all right so again it's the same thing i was you know saying before we continue to achieve real growth in measured in the sale of liters right so if you look at last year or last month the amount of fuel we sold in liters grows so it's not just the price of gas going up that's why we're getting more revenue we're actually selling more product so we've been growing our um business at you know at beachwood avenue plus the dodos which are the dealer owned stations in addition to that, we're growing our industrial customer base. Industrial customers really mean corporate, you know, corporate customers. They have less a fleet of trucks or tractors or you know whatever uses diesel. We'll come there, we'll install um, a tank and a pump, and they're to dispense the road fuel. Um, it is very what we do again, you know, we love to apply technology and we use the latest technology to make our customers um, delighted. So we offer bonded tanks, which means that every tank we're supposed to have a secondary container. So if the tank leaks, it leaks into something that will capture the fuel or the oil. So typically, you know, people had to erect concrete structures for that. What we have done is we have, you know, created a, a solution that is an all-in-one solution that can be delivered to you next day, which has a tank and a surrounding well. In addition to that, it has a pump on it, so it's all in one. Going even further, it has fleet management technologies. What that means? So let's say you have twelve trucks or twelve or twenty, you know, vehicles associated with. It. Instead of having a little book and writing, and you're writing down, you know, German bands to ten liters on Tuesday. You get a key fob, and you just swipe it across the screen. You know, it records that I took the gas away and how much. So it allows our customers to reduce the amount of time or effort they need to be able to have reporting, be able to track who is using the fuel, how much in a very convenient and easy way. And you know, they're very appreciative of it and we're doing that business also, you know, pretty well. Great, great. All um, right, any, any you wanna so you want to highlight on in terms of future growth? Right, so for Q2 and Q3, as I said, we already opened one more station in, in Whitehall, St. Elizabeth, and we hope to open another station before December. So, you know, I can't speak too much of where and everything at this point. Gonna ask. <laughs> for competitive reasons, I can't do that, but yes, we're supposed to open another station, at least one more for the remainder of this year. And, you know, based on you know requests and demand throughout our network we will be expanding the detailed blend to other stations throughout our network um in addition to that we're going to be going around to i mean one of our stations and improving them the look and the feel of the station so we're making some expenditures in that area and as usual we'll continue to make investments in the lpg space so that when we do um sell our first liter of lpg um, it's a business that can grow because, you know, we don't want to start and then you're limited by the assets that you have, you know, you want to be able to, once it, you enter the market and somebody wants a cylinder, wants a business, we actually have, you know, the cylinders to meet that expectation. So it's time consuming, you know, a lot of manufacturing, a lot of importing is taking place. It takes time, but once we do want to execute it well, so, you know, we will continue to make investments in that area. Next slide. So, one uh, one of the questions we've got about the the LPG. It's so the question were was was whether or not it's a turnkey solution you're implementing or are you building a model from scratch? Well, I'm not really sure what I mean by turnkey, but what I would say is the the LPG space requires that you have your own cylinder. So we're I coming think, with our I own think brand. What you're asking is, is whether or not that's a model you're maybe taking from, from, from another country 
and and you're just implementing it here or it's something that you've created the model that that you'll be using i, I think that i think that's what they're asking um well as you know first is a jamaican company wholly owned um or you know jamaican owned jamaican strategy everything jamaica what i would say is like all things we do we look at technologies that are available across the world and we look at our own situation and we see how we can use technology to best apply to our situation so yes we're, we're looking at you know a lot of things on the technology side that would improve the business but we also are very aware of is that it is not a two-year business it's a 50-year 100-year business so we are positioning ourselves to be able to grow that business in such a way that it allows us to scale and scale okay. quickly. and scale quickly. I think that's much that's as much that I can say on that without giving out. Okay. But, well, um, hopefully the person who asks it is watching. It's someone from from one of our community groups. So. Hopefully, if, if you're watching, if that's good enough, let us know. If not, feel free to message me. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, let's see if there's... Okay, so that's it in terms of the slides here. So I think we can go to some of the questions that we had for you. Absolutely. There. So I won't ask you in any particular order. You gave us a, a good introduction to FESCO. That was one of the first things I asked about. Uh, products and services you share that business model you spoke about that as well and you spoke about how you plan to to continue growing and remain profitable one of the things that i'll ask you to explain here that when we're going over the the prospectus here a few persons had questions about and that's the model as it relates to your your acquisition of stations or your 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 rollout of stations. So you, you you mentioned a few of the models. I can't remember the names now. Can you speak about those a little bit so persons understand how that side of the business is built out? Absolutely. So Fesco, the only station Fesco as a company owns is the one in Beechwood Avenue. All the other stations, the properties owned by somebody else. Um, so the acronyms are dealer owned for for beachwood avenue it's a company owned company operated station so for many other stations you'll find the first part of it says dealer owned and for the purest form of that you'll find dealer owned dealer operated right however to grow the business and to you know allow dealers to share in the business we also have you know variations of the model where let's say even though a dealer owns a station we'll invest heavily in that station so we'll either put in you know gas station assets you know which could be from storage tanks to dispensers to the canopy to the whole workings to the technology behind it so we're willing to sit with dealers or potential dealers and help them to fulfill their dreams of owning a station and operating a station that is what we do. It allows us to bring on entrepreneurs into the business who, you know, know their markets, want to want help. So we'll bring on, you know, you know, a lot of people like that. So the purest form is when we own a station, which is dealer owned, sorry, company owned, company operated on one side. And then the extreme of that is company, oh, I'm sorry, dealer owned, dealer operated. But there are variations in between where you can have company invested, dealer operated, you could have dealer owned company operated so yeah. we could lease a station from somebody who owns a station we don't currently do that um as i said the only station we operate is the one that we own currently which is which okay i'd say chemo from linkedin is asking the process of becoming a dealer chemo that's what pretty much is being explained here so if you're interested, I guess the company will just reach out. The person, uh, the, the individual or company can just reach out to FESCO and you'll explain the details, evaluate the opportunity, et cetera, right? All right. So the main, the main criteria is for you to just, if you have a piece of land that you believe that is suitable for our station, reach out to us. We will we'll guide you along the way into making it, you know, a gas station, if it's feasible. Yeah. All right. Great. And so wait. We have questions around 
EVs a little later on. I won't take those yet. Okay. Uh, Aljami, we actually answered that just a few moments ago um, in terms of cooking yes. gas. I believe yes. April 2023 is when, when you're expecting. That's when we scheduled to do it. Um, we're working very hard to do it for that date. Um, okay. To be honest, shipping is a nightmare. Manufacturing across the world is a nightmare. Um, but we're actioning everything as soon as we can, and we still believe that it is, that is our real need. Okay, because I was just going to ask you, based on the challenges you just described, I'm wondering mm -hmm. if that... No, it's still a real need. No, okay. it's still a real need. It just means that we have to work a lot harder, which we are. Okay, okay. Because I'll tell you, you know, we, we, we listen to everything that is said very, very carefully. Mm -hmm. So if you don't sound too positive, it's going to... No, all right, don't put it this way. Um, I'm, I like to be cautious and we're working towards April 20th. I believe that we'll, I believe that we'll achieve it. I don't okay. want to be overly aggressive, but I, I strongly believe we will achieve April 20th. April 2023. Okay. Okay. Good. All right. So we, we, we'll jump into the community questions now. So one of the first ones we got um, or what are the plans? But recently acquired one billion. Oh, well, plans are being it's being used. So you know we we we're buying LPG assets. As you know, I said yeah. before. And so based on been, based on how the project has been rolling out, do you do you suspect you'll need more funds to be raised, or is that still enough based on how things are progressing? That's an excellent question. Um, as you can see. We earn, we're earning, our earnings are growing. And the good thing about our business is that the, early, the earnings that we earn are actual cash. So in the past, we've been able to fund a lot of our expansion through our you know, retaining earnings. Um, we believe that we'll be, and we have been able to utilize the earnings of the company to expand. So I don't want to annualize the quarterly profits, but other, you know, other, Wise people have also done so. I think um, I see inside of basically said they anticipate that we should earn anywhere from 600 to 650 million per year. I think that's reasonable given that you know in one quarter we made 150 million. So you just look at the cash that's being generated. If per se you said that is 600 million for the rest of the year, that's 60 percent of what we borrowed. Yeah. So we generate now that cash, which we're able to reinvest in the business. So at this point in time, what I can safely say is for the next few years, we'll be making a lot of investments into the LPG business and the gas station business. But I believe that we'll be able to fund a lot of it out of retaining earnings. Retaining earnings sorry. Okay, okay, good. So, so no, so, so for those, so, so those persons looking for maybe an additional raise, it's it's not expected that you need no, to do it. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I'm saying at this point in time, because sometimes the truth is sometimes to be able to grow, once you start something and it's going even better than you thought, I need to access capital quickly. Or if opportunities in the market turn up, so let's say we're able to find you know, a piece of land in a prime area, to put up a gas station that you know just came up on the market overnight or one of our listeners here say hey they have a prime location that they want us to put up a station it's going to take you know a lot of money mm -hmm. we won't turn away that that opportunity we'll find a way to raise the funds to access those opportunities so i wouldn't say we wouldn't i'm just saying no. at this point in time we're able to fund what we want to do given the, the capital that we have. okay and based on maybe your preference uh, because one of the questions someone asked about the the one billion they were asking you know since since it was you said it was done primarily by ncb they were able to to, they to, were brokers, to everything um they were wondering if there was something that you would would have maybe done to raise funds for for the rest of the public to get access to so is it is is it that bond is your preferred way to raise is it it's just quick or are, are you or, i mean are you not equity rates? Yeah. We're having discussions. I think Marlene from Stock Exchange is um, championing that um, the limit on the threshold, yeah, 
Right, raised from 500 to 750 million. Mm -hmm. um, that is something we also agree with, you know, that you know, would be, could be increased. Um, if that were to happen, there, there are potential possibilities where we would, you know, consider thinking about, you know, accessing the equity market. But at this time, that's, you know, very, that's not something that we're actioning, working on, nothing, you know, there's nothing to write home about. It's just, you know, if it were to come to fruition, her actions, that in that thought process, if that was able to happen, then we'd start thinking about it. But at this point okay. in time, we're not thinking about it. We're not thinking about it. No. Okay. All right. Next question is, will a company move towards importing their own finished product instead of buying from Petrojack? Very interesting question. Um, so obviously we have grown significantly since our IPO. Um, if it, you know, and I won't go into the details for competitive reasons, but obviously our leaders have grown substantially, which yes, you know, we, 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 it obviously came up and was thinking about do we need to import our own finished product. But at the same time, you have to balance that with, you know, what you're getting from Petrojam or somebody else importing the product. Um, what, they're, what they're allowing you to do is to be a distributor mm -hmm. where you don't necessarily take on the inventory risk. So if you have a ship on the waters coming with petrol fuel and the prices go down, or if you have, you know, two months worth of storage and the price is dropping, you're making inventory losses over that period. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a different business you're going into, which requires a different um, sets of assets. You're going to need storage, you're going to need a lot of different things. So it's not, so, it's not a decision that you know, is made overnight. It's something that we'd have to carefully consider. It is something that we have thought of, but at this point in time, we have no, no active interest in importing our own finished goods at this time. Okay, okay. Next question here. Um, are there plans to take advantage of the upcoming EV push in the local market? Will you be introducing charging stations? And how do you see it in terms of profitability? Um, excellent question. Um, truth be told, I don't think many industries have actually figured out EVs yet, um, let alone the financing institutions. Um, Let's say, let's say theoretically an EV battery lasts 10 years. And right yeah, now, the time, yeah. pardon, and the last 10 years, right? I say, I don't remember the estimated time. If, I, if think it's, I think it's somewhere around 10 years or a little less. So I don't think banks per se would be lending money for 10 years you know, with the value of the vehicle. Well, so it depends. They, they lend money for a new car now for 10 years. Right. But the question, the challenge is when an EV car hits 10 years, that battery needs to be replaced. And that battery costs right now over 10,000 US. So that's why it's important. It's about $2 million. Are the banks asking those customers to pay down $2 million as deposit for that car? Because when it approaches that ninth year, the value of that car significantly declines because there needs to be a new battery. No, if the banks haven't figured this out yet, mm -hmm. many industries haven't figured this out yet because not, the, the offerings don't. I don't believe have taken that into consideration. Yeah, I see what so, you're saying. No, if you look even at the Jamaican standpoint. Um, for electricity distribution. A lot of it is done above ground. Poles. Um, Jamaica is frequented by hurricanes. Um, do you want to be left without transportation when a storm happens? So, again, what going even further, right now there's only one company that's allowed to charge for electricity. Charge a fee for electricity, which is GPS. Given all of these uncertainties, and given what we have seen in even more developed markets, where charging is subsidized by 
the owner of the technology of the car. So Tesla subsidizes. It's a subsidy-driven market. It's not an economic venture. Now, again, again, as I said earlier, we cannot focus on ROI. Yeah. So it's very hard for us to invest in something that doesn't generate a return. Yeah. In fact, so generally, it's pretty much the, the 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 economics of it doesn't seem profitable to you to pursue at this point. Charging, charging. I'm not saying you know EV cars people don't like them. I'm not saying all that. What I'm saying is at this point in time, charging is not a business, neither here or in most jurisdictions around the world. So, and you know everything around it. Again, Jamaica, you know, structurally not ready for it. So it's something that we're watching. Um, the technology is changing every day. I see no. Um, there are some cars that, you know, instead of going to charging ports, it does change the batteries in China with the brands. So we're very aware of all that is happening. What I can say is that once we figure out a way to make money in it, <laughs> we'll dive into it. But we haven't figured out a way how to make any money in it. So, so it's not something that we're actually doing at this point. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. So you mentioned that you have at least one more gas station planned for the rest of the year. Correct. Um, I don't know if you consider that along the same lines as plans to maybe acquire other gas stations, right? Because I remember you you showed us your market share in, in the prospectus. Mm -hmm. So there's great room for growth, right? Because I remember the, the current market share was under double digits. Are there right. plans to acquire any existing gas stations? Is that something that you pursue? Um, what's what's your thoughts on that? So, no, not at this point in time. We've been, you know, pretty, going pretty organically. Um, what I would say is, if those opportunities so arrive, we will definitely consider them. But at this point in time, there is no there is no such activity currently taking place. Okay. Yeah. So, so we're not going to see any notices in the paper. Not at this point in time, no. Okay, okay, okay. And I'm saying if somebody has some stations and want to sell them to me, please, you know, in, you know, call me. You know, numbers are listed, or you can just, you know, investors with an S at festoja.com email me. But at this point in time, there's no such opportunity. No. Okay, okay. I mean, sometimes when I'll see maybe a, a gas station that maybe hasn't. Because clearly one of the things that Fesco does um, that's very, very distinct about the brand is that you take the time to develop your, your location. So they're, you know, refurbished, they're well done, etc. Mm -hmm. I'll see an old gas station and I'll be like, well, that seems like a good candidate to maybe be taken over by, you know, a Fesco. So we yeah, always thought that that would be something that you'd, you'd consider as a company. So, absolutely. And, you know, we have rebranded several stations in the past and we will continue to do so you know when the opportunity arises and it is something that that is something that you know comes up from time to time and you know it's in the past we have done that and, okay. you know it is part of what we do all right next question is what are some of the greatest industrial challenges facing fesco wow uh, there are a lot of challenges faced in a lot of businesses in Jamaica. I think one of them is, um, I think in some areas in Jamaica right now, we have full employment. And, you know, how does that display itself? That displays itself when, you know, you have people leaving jobs without securing another job because they are very confident that they can get, you know, another job. In addition to that, um, you know, inflation has eaten away at, you know, a lot of the salaries. So we find ourselves having to, you know, adjust you know, wage rates. Um, and truth be told, at first, what I really prefer in many instances is, you know, if we can utilize technology and upgrade the skill set, I'd love to pay people more than what they're earning now and get greater productivity. So if 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 we can figure out that that mix, you know, that's something that we really, you know, we really don't mind um, upgrading the talent. Um, when we do our HR reviews, part of it is 
if you really don't need any supervision to perform your task, then you're probably paid at the higher, highest percentile of that. Um, so that's, you know, we like that, you know, we like those type of people, you know, in our, in our, in our, in our team. Um, industrial challenges other than that, other than inflation, high interest rates is a real challenge. High interest rates can change uh, a great project into a lackluster project. Um, I think interest rates have doubled in some areas now. When we did our bond, it was at seven seven and a half percent just in March. And I think to bar the same money is now we'll be paid probably 30 percent. So um, interest rates, and I really hope that you know for the latter part of this year, early opening to early next year, that interest rates really start to trend down, downwards, because it really poses a challenge for most, if not all, businesses to make making you know projects viable. Yeah. Uh, so Albert is asking. I mean. I mean Albert says, would the company be interested if to own Petrojam if the opportunity presented itself? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Next question. We have quite a few left. Uh, with your current low market share, are there plans to increase the size of market share if yes, then how? I don't believe our market share is that low anymore. No. Um, to be honest, uh, we're, 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 doing very, we're doing pretty well based on our own internal numbers, um, pretty, pretty well. Um, yeah. How do we intend to increase the market share? As I said, we, 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 we plan to add additional stations. Um, we plan to you know, further, you know, further grow in the industrial space. There's a lot of growing for us to do. But, I mean, we have, we, have, we have doubled what we, our market share in a year. Well, you know, I'm significantly growing. Yeah. Okay. All right, um, let's move on. I'm, I'm trying to get all the questions in before our time runs out. Mm -hmm. Next question is, what's your best selling product? Um, Why best selling. Most profitable? The best selling product in Jamaica is 90. Eat and 90 gasoline. Um, if you look at numbers for the entire industry and pressure jam numbers, E1090 is the most popular gasoline in Jamaica fuel. Um, that's consistent with our you know, brand also. I think it's even more so um, more so for us that we sell a lot more 90 than we do 87. It is the most popular um, fuel that we do distribute. Okay. What new products or services are you exploring for the next five to ten years? I think it's no secret that we are very interested in um, bringing to the public um, blends of fuels and different grades of fuels. Um, I, don't, I think that's an open secret. We're doing it now at Beach with our little detail day to get out and to expand it, um, to other stations. Um, new products and services, obviously, next year, LPG. We're going to be in that space. Um, so that will be new for us, not new to Jamaica. But there are some technologies that we want to, or processes that we want to put into that business that probably is new to Jamaica. And um, at the appropriate time, we'll be, you know, telling you all about, all about that. But, you know, we, we definitely, when we come into that space, we we'll want to bring something new and exciting. Okay. So this this is a like a three part question. Um, so, what do you plan to do when the founders pool is sold off? That's how the question was phrased. Will you discontinue the incentive program for dealers and employees, or do a rights issue? All right. So first, I think there needs to be an understanding of what the founders pool is. Yes. Uh, founders pool is a company that was set up. Prior to us going public to hold share, hold FESPA shares, right? And those shares are to be sold to dealers and employees of the company, which was an incentive program which was formulated and designed prior to the IP. So there's a certain block of shares that are held to be sold to dealers at prescribed times. Um, what, what that really was is a way to reward our dealers who joined us, join the network. 
But if they didn't have, let's say, the funds to buy the shares at IPO, they would be disadvantaged. So they have time to buy the shares at a later date, you know, and still obtain the shares. So, you know, it's an incentive program for them. So designed that allows and gives them time to able to acquire the shares if they didn't have the money up front. Okay. It is designed also to you know conclude in about five years. So once that happens, you know, the bonus will no longer exist and you know it is what it is. If you're okay. talking that, that, it's, that was what I was hoping for, like a timeline. So you said within the next five, five years, years. Okay. Yeah. five years from now or five years from five IPO. Years from IPO. Five years from IPO. Um, yeah, it will be, it will be, you know, unless the owners of the first of owners, why not have owners decide to do something else, you know, with the business, but that's the incentive program for selling off shares or selling tiers, who's in that country, it will end in five years. Um, will FESCO do a rights issue? Well, I'm, not, I'm not really sure that question ties in, but what I would say is if we were to do like something like an ESA program for... New yes, I think that's what that's what they might be asking. Right. It's not something that's on the table right now, but obviously going forward, it might be something to attract talent because you're always trying to attract the best talent. And you know, people want the equity stake in a business once they can deliver. So it's not something being thought of our action at this point in time, but it's one of those things that you have in your quiver that at some point in time you might exercise if the time is right. So at this point, then there's no intention to create an ESA program, but you know, you never know in the future. Okay, okay. Uh, Tavares is asking related to the same question how is the founder's pool priced? Do persons who are able to take advantage do they get the IPO pricing or for shares? Or uh, that's private transaction between two private people. I won't go into much more detail now. I will say the big perspectives. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, Oshin is asking if there will be an APO. Oshin, you might have missed. We, we can address this before. Uh, but Jeremy, you can go ahead since it was just, you know, popped right. up here. Right. So, you know, we is 400 million at IPO. The limit was 500 million. So we were to go back to the market, it's only be 100 million. <clears throat> 100 million we can access on the junior market. Sorry. <clears throat> I know that the, the stock exchange is trying to increase that threshold to 750 million, which at that point in time, not just us, but I'm pretty sure that many other junior markets would consider doing an APO at that point in time. It's something we would consider, but at this point in time, it's not something we're actively pursuing. Um, we're, we're comfortable with the level of capital we have at this time and how we're deploying it, and especially at the rate of which we're profitable that we're able to increase our capital base by earning okay so we're pretty comfortable so following up that same question limitless podcast is asking do you have a personal preference between apo or rights issue um personal or i can't speak for the company because i haven't discussed <laughs> this at any you understand it at any level to determine whether you know if you are right issue there which okay, let's let let's start with personal. And what would be your personal preference? Because you would have a say in this as the CEO, right? Um. Typically, I mean, I, I don't mind rewarding people who are there now. So a rights issue, you know, we could probably. I, I personally, I, I I would want. I wouldn't necessarily want to dilute somebody who doesn't want to be diluted. So, I'd, you know, I'd prefer personally a rights issue if we give that person who's an existing shareholder the opportunity to keep their level of ownership of the company at the same percentage. And if they choose not to, then go to the open to the open market. So, I'd first give the existing shareholders, in my opinion, the opportunity to buy the shares in the same proportion as they own, and then go to the market for, you know, all the shares that are not taken so that's my personal, it's not the company's position that I'm not discussing. Understood. Understood. <laughs> yeah. Understood. All right. Uh, let me let's podcast is asking again, would you consider a stock split at some point? I guess depending on price or our liquidity yeah. concerns. Right. It's not something we consider at this time. Okay. 
All right, uh, Orville is asking if there are any plans to expand to the Caribbean. Excellent question. Um, we don't put limits on ourselves and we don't put limits on the business. We do acknowledge that we're trying to diversify, but again, we, we, we diversify and we hope to diversify into spaces that generate, again, return on investment. So we're not diversifying just to say we are diversifying. And there are opportunities in other Caribbean islands. Um, if and when they do come up, we will definitely consider them because it's something, you know, diversification is something that we're considering. Yeah. considering. All right, Orville again is asking if is there a definitive number of stations that you're targeting to build? There's not a number, um, what I would say is, again, everything is opportunity-based. The service stations is a location-based thing, right? Um, you could be the best station in Blue Mountain Peak, nobody will go. The station is a convenience location business. Um, so what does that mean? It means that Theoretically, if you find the right location, you could have two stations beside there, beside each other that they will. Um, it also depends on the market. If you have enough buyers, you know, cars and the car enthusiasts, you know, people traveling along a certain route, they could have multiple stations along that route. Um, also, you have many untapped areas in Jamaica that's experiencing a lot of housing development that you know people will traverse it to go to work and so so there are opportunities if you want me to answer and say is there a number there is no number because there are so many gas stations in Jamaica there, there's a lot um what I do know is that if you look at our volumes and the number of stations Tesco stations enjoy a better than average patron so we don't necessarily need to have as many stations as our competitors to achieve the same level of volume. Yeah. All right. A question from Priority Mindset. I don't know specifically uh, what's being referred to here, but where do you order our ship from? Not sure what that means. I really yeah. don't know. Priority that. Mindset, give us, give us some more context, please, to that, to that question. Let me see if there are any more... Tavares, I don't know if you missed it, but um, we already spoke about the LPG rollout. Um, so maybe right. hopefully next year, April. Schedule for next year, April, still on target for it. And as I said, as we go along each day, we're acquiring assets and building our processes. Okay. All right. All right. Let me just say the last few questions here. I think this is the last question we can afford to take. So what do you think of Regency Petroleum rumored to be listing soon? Um, yeah. From what I understand, as a Jamaican company, I wish them all the best. Um, wish them all the best. Yeah. And honestly, what I believe, one of the fundamental things I believe, I believe that there's enough out there for everybody. Um, I think the, the, the world in land is bountiful. Um, I don't think our success um, limits somebody else from being successful. I know at Festival we work very hard to achieve success. And um, yeah, good luck to them. All right. A question here from from someone, what are your thoughts re retaining profits for growth and expansion versus paying minuscule dividends? Their words, not mine. Minuscule. Um, minuscule. Remember, you know, it's twenty five percent of the profits that they make. That's the way we, we plan to pay up. So, um, next year, you know, if all goes well and continues, the dividend next year will be greater than the dividends this year, as it's yeah. relative to the profits that we do make. Um, what do I believe? I believe that constant or uh, dividends are important. I believe that um, it's my personal belief. I believe that you know paying dividends are important for um, for many reasons. Um, 
I also believe that you have to retain you know, some of your earnings, especially if the company is growing. There are many opportunities that I mentioned earlier, and the level of profitability we're seeing this year, the amount of profit that is anticipated by the market, by you know, other, other, other um, survey investors out there, what they're projecting, is less than 60% of the amount of money we just borrowed. Yeah. Million dollars. So if you can, if you have opportunities, which we do have, to grow the business at you know good ROI projects, retain earnings is a very good way to finance a lot of those projects because you don't have an interest cost built in. So yeah. yes, we right now it's retain seventy five percent of the profits because we do have growth opportunities. And I also do believe that paying dividends is a good discipline for a company to, to have. Where okay. you, you have to ensure that if you want to do projects and you want to do, you choose good projects. And those projects make money. Otherwise, I, I think it's a good, a good practice in paying a dividend. And I'm proud of us for choosing to have to pay 25% of our Okay. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, Limitless Podcast is asking what do you project? will happen to gasoline prices over the next year, next three years, next 10 years? Your guess is as good as mine. I have no idea. Again, I'll say that line famous in all our reports. We do not focus on the price of gasoline. We focus on margins and how many liters we sell. But I have no idea. There are some people that estimate that gas price will come significantly down. Some people say it's the same at about where it is now. I, I don't focus on that. Okay. Uh, priority minds are giving us some context as to um, their question. So when, uh, where do you order from? Is uh, about when you when you spoke about shipping issues. Um, oh, you mean like we resource materials all yeah. over the world from from Ukraine, from Ukraine to Thailand to China to Israel to Panama to US. You name it, all over the world, the source. Um, the source. Okay. And the very final, final comment or question we'll take because we're over time. Elaine is saying he saw where one of the FESCO directors sold about 900,000 shares recently. If the company is doing well, why sell? I mean, that's a director selling a share is a personal decision. I, I, I would be very presumptuous to ask you why somebody would be selling or not selling. So everybody have personal um, decisions why they do. I mean, somebody could be as simple as somebody wants to buy a house, a car, something like that, and they have shares, you know. I don't know, I, 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 don't, I don't ask. Um, I haven't been so selling mine, <laughs> that much I know, and um, I mean, there's nothing wrong also in taking profits as a principle. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you, some people take profits at different points in time and reinvest at other points in time. So let's say you have a, you know, a chance or you know, to sell some shares now, you sell some now and you buy some later. It's, everything is a personal decision. That, you know, that's why it's a public company and that's why everybody there's a market for the shares. Um, anytime you're selling shares, there's always somebody buying it. Yeah, so. <laughs> Yeah, we say that all the time in our group that there has to be two sides to the transaction. So correct. So um, we're doing well. Um, we're doing well. So okay. The, I guess the thought process is if directors are selling, maybe they know something that is coming that they're maybe exiting for. That I think that sometimes that could be the the thought process that could be you know the thought process but what i would say is that i think the stock exchange there are blackboard periods mm -hmm. so um directors can sell leading up to a quarter the quarterly results because let's say they would have inside information no they are allowed to sell let's say after quarterly information is public because if the public knows as much as the director knows Right? No, what I would say is the quarter we just did was a very good quarter. So you know as much as the directors know. So you know, there's nothing there's nothing that the directors know that you don't know. Hello? 
I don't know if you guys can hear me. Uh, connection went very sorry about that. Very first time that, that has happened. Let me try and get Jeremy again. Hmm. Sorry about that, everyone. We'll try to edit it out of the video. Um, see what happens there. Right. I'm asking Jeremy if he's able to rejoin. Um, we'll see in a few moments. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. I mean, the good thing is we were wrapping up. So thankfully. Hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. So we'll see if Jeremy is able to, to, to rejoin us. Great. If not, then I think we can still wrap up because we've got a bulk of the questions answered. Guys, please, please like the video. If you're here, 95 persons here, please like the video. Thank you. Okay, Jeremy's back. Sorry about that, Jeremy. I, I don't, I, I think my internet went down, so I lost you for a minute there. Um, yeah. So I don't know if you remember what you were saying. No. I think you're asking about a director selling 900. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. And you are, you. I think you were going into a, a, an example. I'm not sure what it was, but I, I think that was answered as well. Right. I just um, think that it's, it's a personal decision. People make yeah. personal decisions at you know different points in time. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, let me just see if here if there's anything else I wanted to raise. So the final question that I'll ask for you guys, if there are any question that I missed, post it in the comments under the video. When we get to a certain amount, we'll just email them to Jeremy. And he'll either join us back for for another video, or I'll just post a response in our in in our community group. So Jeremy, final question I'll ask you, which is what we ask every CEO here: What type of investor do you think Fesco is ideal for? Excellent question. Um, Fesco is one of those companies, a small company. We're growing significantly in a year and we're growing on a growth trajectory. It's one of those great opportunities where you can actually buy the product as a consumer and you know and, and being an investor and a customer of that product in general, which is a very unique opportunity and I think an excellent opportunity. So what you'll find going forward, well currently a lot of our customers are shareholders. And even more so going forward, we're going to look for your support and we're into the cooking gas business to buy our cooking gas. Because you're buying from yourselves and you're rewarding yourselves for your, your loyalty. What type of investors we have? I think we have a lot of different kind of investors. Um, I think we're getting a lot more institutional investors because they actually see the growth of the company and that we're executing a lot of the stuff on our business. What our business plan said we would do, we're executing on it. Um, we've had shareholders who have entered the top 10 of our shareholders um, listing from the outside. They just love the company and buy shares, buy shares, buy shares. So, and we started off with what, about 4,500 shareholders at IPO. And, you know, I think we still you know about 4,000 shareholders to this date. I think we have a mix of um, young people, we have a mix of um, older investors and we're getting more institutional um, demand for the shares because, as again, we're executing a lot of what we said we would do. 
And I think so, in some instances, in many instances, we can execute a lot better, even given you know the constraints of COVID, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, what people you know appreciate about what we do is that we say we're going to do something, and most times we do it or do it even better. Yeah. 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 Great. Thank you so much, Jeremy. Definitely enjoy this conversation. I hope our community is happy with the questions that we've asked. Again, if I miss anything, just post it in the comments below the video, post it in the community group. We'll try and get to as much of them as we can for another video. So so usually what we do is, is invite um, our, our CEOs to join us again around earnings. So, you know, opening this invite to you, Jeremy, when, when your next setup financials come out if, if you'd be so kind as to join us for us to go through those results together that would be great i'm sure our community would would enjoy that as well so absolutely um as again i saw your platform before before you know actually being invited and i, I really like the quality of, the, um, of what you're doing and um we share the best and I, I, i'd be privileged to be invited back Great, thank you. I mean, great, great platform that our internet just went down. <laughs> but we we we'll definitely take care of that. I've been I've been. If it's, if it's demand, you know, if it's the lines outside and people, you know, if it's, if it's <laughs> then it's something to be happy about is. Really... Oh boy, it, it it's me not putting in. I, I know I know I've needed to put in a UPS for a while because we are live streaming. Anything can happen. So just a simple investment in a UPS would, would prevent all of this. Um, so we'll definitely be, be prepared for that moving forward. Thanks again, Jeremy. Really, really uh, hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Take care. Take care, everybody. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. I really hope you enjoy this. Please like the video. I'm not going to... I'm, I'm going to keep saying it because we're finding that the likes on the videos are really, really low. Uh, we've had over 300 persons drop in so far, and we're gone maybe maybe about 50 likes. That's, that's, that proportion needs to change. So really asking you to like the video. It helps us. It is free of charge. You don't have to pay to like the video. So it would really help. Yes, 54 likes to this point. Really, guys, help us out in that regard if there are any questions we missed as i said just be sure to send them to me i'll send them to to jeremy yes priority mindset i agree like very um you know humble in depth you could we could tell that he wanted to to give us as much information as possible so he tried to do that that was one of the conversations that we had he wants to be able to share with 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 investors the information while balancing the the um you know competitive landscape in terms of one when he shares publicly is also sharing with his competition so bearing that in mind um this is the only time i'll allow flames for fesco guys so flames are okay on social media but not you know not in the group um how will the pending recession affect the company i mean let's see because one of the things that we know for sure. So one of the things we spoke about, um, you know, a few a few months ago, are companies, you know, like Trans Jamaica, companies like Fesco. How would a, a recession impact them? When you think about it, even if we're in a recession, right? Persons may scale back in terms of what they can afford, but the toll may be considered an an essential. Gasoline is going to be considered essential. So those those industries will be impacted but i think they'll still be able to get through it because a recession does not last you know forever so i mean let's just see again he he spoke a lot about the business model of the company and what their focus is so um you know let's see you know where we are with that um all right, so I don't think I've missed anything else. Thank you guys so much. Hope you've registered for our, our, our existing class. Class is on September 3rd. If you have not registered yet, please do so. If you have not shared the link yet with someone, we're asking each of our community members to share the class registration link with 10 persons. If you have 10 friends, family members, coworkers, share it with 10 persons. We want to get those registrations up. 
it is a free class. We can't guarantee that our classes will always be free. So while they are free, we want persons to take advantage of it. So it's on September 3rd. And if you register, you'll get the instructions as to how to, how to join the session. That's why we're using Eventbrite because it automates the emails that are sent out to you. So on the day of the class, which is September 3rd, you'll be sent a link where you can join the class. All right, everyone, look forward to our, our, our interview with JMMB this Wednesday at 6.30. We're going to speak to the CEO and CFO of JMMB. Be sure to join us for that one. Thank you guys so much for being a part of the community. Thank you for your support. Thank you for liking, sharing, and subscribing. Uh, Sonia, let me share the link with you now. It's in our link tree, though. Well, let me just copy it and share it. So just share the link in the chat. But if you go to our link tree or on any of our social media platforms, there's usually a link in our bio. The very first link will have the class registration. All right, it's also on our website, learngrowinvestclub.com. There is a page called Learn, and then you can go to register for the class there. Okay. All right. All right, guys. Enjoy the rest of your evening. I'll see you on, well, I'll see you tomorrow because we're having our weekly IG live. We're talking about how to manage your debt. So Renee is going to host that live tomorrow on IG. Then I'll see you back on YouTube on Wednesday. Okay. Take care, everyone. Learning is the key to successful investing. And who doesn't want to invest in some way? Here at Learn Grow Invest, we focus on financial education, all with the aim of sharing our knowledge on personal finance, investing, and building wealth. We do this on the foundation of our faith in God. If a more holistic approach is what you need, check out our Grow Faith-Based Financial Coaching Program. Find out more about us at learngrowinvestclub.com and follow us on all social media platforms at Learn 